hey what's up honestly the pressure's on because i'm running out of natural light so shouldn't have wasted my sunlight watching tiktoks because now i'm on a clock all right, hello everybody. As the title suggests, this video is going to provide some tips and tricks to help you make your resume shine as brightly as possible. As a former technical hiring manager, I've reviewed hundreds of resumes um, for data science and web development positions, but I think this advice can apply to all different kinds of positions it will have a bit of a, an emphasis on technical roles all right let's get started tip number one be convincing everybody knows it's super easy to lie on a resume very very easy you're literally just writing things on a piece of paper so your job is to convince the hiring manager that you're not lying that you actually know what you say you know this applies to both hard skills and soft skills that you claim to have let's start with the hard skills Hard skills are tools, things like Microsoft Suite, Photoshop, um, Python, SQL. If you claim to know any of these things, it should be clear to the hiring manager where you've acquired the skill or how you've applied it. If you just kind of list it, if you say like, hey, I'm really good at Photoshop, but then nowhere in your resume uh, can I see that like you've had a chance to use Photoshop, you don't really state it anywhere else, you simply list it as a skill, uh, I might not buy that you actually know it. So yeah, convince me that you know it. Prove to me. When did you use it? How did you use it? Convince me that you're not like the other girls. Now, soft skills are trickier to prove. With soft skills, keep every bullet point on your resume concrete, full of substance, and meaningful. Avoid saying things like, I'm a great communicator and I work well in a team. Don't waste space saying things you can't prove. Instead, save your personality traits for the interview. This is where you can actually showcase things like being a good communicator. As a senior member of the team, I trained incoming employees. A story like this showcases that you're a responsible and trusted team player. So instead of saying, I'm a responsible, trusted team player, you tell a story that convinces me that you are. It's just a lot more genuine. Tip number two, get to the point. <laughs> Include the most relevant content right at the top of your resume. This seems super obvious, but I still see people having a hard time prioritizing what's most important. Hiring managers have tons of resumes to review, so you need to convince them early on why you're a good fit, fit for the role. Fit, fit for the fit, fit for the fit, fit for the role. What does the job ask for, and why would you be a good candidate? That's what needs to go on the top. If you're a student applying for an internship or a new grad applying for a junior role, then your education should probably be near the top of your resume. That's kind of like the first criteria that they want to make sure that you have. If you're applying to a role that's highly technical, make sure that your technical skills are towards the top of your resume. Whatever best showcases your competency should be the first thing that the hiring manager sees. Which brings me to my next point. Tip number three is be concise. Tell the hiring manager why they need to hire you for the role and leave out everything else. They probably don't really care too much about your string of part-time jobs that you had in high school. If you want to include information that isn't necessarily relevant, then try to consolidate it under a single bullet point or just, you know, with as little space as possible. So for example, you could say um, 2015 to 2020, I worked several roles in customer service. Now, the number one question that people ask is, how long should my resume be? Is it bad if it's over a page? Do I need to get everything on a page? And the answer is that, yeah, if you're early on in your career, it probably shouldn't take you more than a page. Um, in all cases, it should never take you more than two pages. When you're trying to decide if the length of your resume is okay, just ask yourself if you would want to read something that long 50 times. Then you'll know. Okay, so now tip number four is going to sound a little bit contradictory to what I just said with tip number three, but tip number four is don't squash everything onto one page at all costs. I know what you're thinking. You just said be concise. Yes, be concise. 
but there is nothing worse than trying to read a full page with size eight font and tiny little margins. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. I know it's annoying to have three or four extra lines dripping onto the second page. If you can't figure out a way to take out the content, then just leave it, it's okay. It's, it's not a huge deal, resumes are digital these days. Nobody really cares if they have to scroll on to another page to, to read the rest. Trust me, they would rather have that than to have a resume with zero white space. Just make sure that it looks good and that it's easy to read. You don't wanna leave a bad impression and annoy your hiring manager before they've even called you in for an interview. Tip number five is, if you don't have any relevant experience for the job, make some for yourself. What kind of skills would you need for the job? What kind of output would you be producing for the role? Simulate it as closely as you can. With the internet, the world is your oyster. You can create so many experiences through taking online courses, a lot of them are free, reading blog posts, watching YouTube videos, doing your own projects. If you're applying to a technical role, you can totally just build a little application that showcases that you have those skills. Just make something that shows that you're passionate and interested in, and most importantly, qualified to do the job that you're applying to do. Students and recent grads, remember that school projects are such a great thing to put on your resume if you don't have any work experience. So many students don't do this and I don't know why, especially things like business case competitions, group projects, presentations of any kind, um, technical assignments, visual assignments, just add it all on there. If you are early on in your career or you're doing a career transition, you don't have tons of relevant experience, um, maybe you put everything nicely and concisely on your resume and you still have some space, don't fill that space at any cost and just like fill it to fill it. But if you do wanna add a little bit of something extra, you can add, use with caution, one to two points um, that express some accomplishments or experiences that you have that aren't necessarily related to the job. The idea here is to keep it super meaningful and interesting. You could add something like accomplishments with your hobbies. So let's say you love to travel and you've backpacked through five or six different countries, add that. Maybe that'll spark a connection with the hiring manager. Let's say you're an athlete and maybe you like started a team in your community or you competed in high school at a national level, that's kind of cool. Write that on your resume, show that you're proud of it. Let's say you taught yourself how to use some kind of software or program, um, or you like to play around with making videos or photos. Um, anything creative, feel free to throw it on there. I think that a lot of people love to see passion in a resume. If you don't have too many other things to put on there, it's a, it's a great way to give yourself some good chances of making a connection with the person who's reading it. I will warn that if you do decide to share things that aren't relevant to the job, keep it super short and concise, put it towards the bottom of the resume and use it as a spice, not as the main ingredient. Now, before I let you go, I do wanna give one more piece of job hunt advice. And that is that you shouldn't rely solely on your resume to land you the role. Portfolios are an amazing thing to include, definitely include a portfolio with every application that you send out if it's relevant to what you're applying for. So a portfolio is just like a collection of examples of your work. Also a great thing to do is to use LinkedIn and try to connect with somebody on the team that you're applying for either before or after applying. Just put some work in and let your resume highlight it. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see and good luck in your job hunt.